Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, webinar on the advanced package produced by ESS Biz Tools to assist accountants and bookkeepers to offer advanced services to SME clients. I'm Peter Towers, Managing Director of ESS Biz Tools. Welcome to this webinar. If you're watching this webinar at a later time and you have any questions, please send me an email to follow up, peter at esspistools.com.au, and I will get back to you. Today we're looking at the advanced package within ESS Biz Tools. So let's follow it through. Let's start with the advisory journey, and it is a journey for many of our clients. It starts with the business advisory services training within the package that we have within ESS Biz Tools. There are 13 segments of that training package, which will give you and your team a full briefing as to how this whole process works. Because there is a need for some familiarization of business related matters for your team. Your team members that have um, been used to uh, preparing an annual set of accounts and an income tax return may find the change to advisory a bit challenging. And that is the reason we've got the advisory services training to help them on that journey. The SME needs analysis is a program that gives you some suggested subject matters and some key discussion points to raise with the client. Many of your clients have grown accustomed to accountants offering annual accounts, income tax returns, some follow-up work with their bank, and that's about it. Whereas the concept of advisory services is that you are, in fact, the virtual chief financial officer. That's what your firm's providing to your clients. And some of your clients will be surprised that you're offering this service. So this is a, a way that you can break the ice, as it were, to have a conversation with your clients. What's worrying you? What wakes you up at 3 a.m.? What would you like to do to change your business? Are you getting all the information you need? Are you satisfied that the charge-out rate that you're using for your tradesmen reflects the actual productivity that they're achieving and recovers all of the costs that are involved? Are you earning the profit that you hope to make? Do you want to know what your business will look like in three years' time? We can show you a projected balance sheet. These are the sort of things that the SME needs analysis will assist you to discuss with your client. We also have communication to members because communication is very important. And the first group of people that we want to make sure that we're communicating regularly with is you. So we send you a weekly grant alert on grants all around Australia from the state and territory governments and the Australian government. And during the year, we will produce approximately 30 podcasts of matters of interest to bookkeepers and accountants, which we will be sending to you to keep you informed of interesting activities relating to the commercial involvement of our clients, what they're doing. And each month we produce members alert. This normally comes out in the second or third week of the month. It's after we produce the Business Plus newsletter, which is on the second Friday of a month. This gives you an update on some of the issues, gives you a reminder about our upcoming training programs and anything else that we have noticed 
that we think might be of interest to you. Training and mentoring that we are offering. We have changed our training program and from the 1st of May, there will be 10 training sessions of one hour each for each of our four product packages. And we will be publishing a timetable on those training and mentoring dates. But we have decided that anyone who's a subscriber member of ESS Biz Tools can attend any of the training programs. So if you're a advisory intro subscriber, as a bookkeeper and you're interested to see what is offered in the advanced program, you will be able to attend that training program as part of your subscription level. And obviously it applies to a starter that wants to have a look at the uh, financial forecasting package. With each of the product packages, we have training videos, briefing videos, information as to how that particular product package can be utilized by you to add value to your clients by giving them advice. In the advanced package, you're offering a virtual chief financial officer service to your clients if you wish. The material's been produced on that basis. So there will be supporting training videos for each of those matters. And let's look at the communication and marketing tools that are available to our subscribers. We start with the Business Plus newsletter. This is produced every month of the year. And a special edition when the federal government brings down their federal budget, normally in May, but the last couple of years there's been a, an extra federal budget as well. And we also produce a special newsletter relating to end of year tax planning, which comes out in late May, early June for you. Within the system, there are client seminars and webinars that are pre-prepared, ready for you to use. And there's videos there to explain how you can go about using that material to educate your clients into the type of services that you're able to provide to them. Within the library, you have 560 papers on about 65 different subject categories that you can badge and send to your clients or give to your clients to back up your professional advice. So if your client asks you a question about capital raising, you could then say, well, I'm going to send you some information on capital raising, utilising Section 708 of the Corporations Act and also how crowdsource funding equity raising operates. And if need be, you could send the client the early stage innovation company notes, but you would probably make sure first that the client was potentially eligible to be considered as an early stage innovation company. In this way, you're able to keep your client informed to bring to their notice key information that you don't have to sit down and spend a lot of hours writing the material. We've already done that for you and we are continually reviewing and updating the material. You could uh, use that particular concept after having had an interview with a client and you've talked about all these issues, the client will not have remembered everything you discussed, will not have taken down the notes. In this way, by sending notes, articles, papers, drawings that are all contained within the library, you will be able to keep them informed. And also within the package is client mentoring and coaching modules. These are modules we've designed for different settings that a client might be in, thinking about buying a business, thinking about selling a business, thinking about starting a business. What's involved? Now, some of our clients charge for this service and, and use the packages that we've provided as the material that's been sent to the clients. 
That's your decision. You can do that, of course. And you don't have to pay any extra money to ESS Pistols because we are not a franchise. So that hopefully gives you an idea of the communication and marketing tools that are a part of the advanced package that you can use to ensure that you're able to offer a great service to your client. For advanced and financial forecasting package subscribers, you can also publish content on your website. And we have listed that content, and that's covered in our license agreement. And you can display uh, papers in a secure area on your advanced and financial forecasting packages subscribers website so that your subscribers could go there to download material. This is only available for advanced and financial forecasting package subscribers. And you can utilize the ESS BizTools logo on your material. Understanding your client from an advisory viewpoint. This is a real challenge. And just as I said at the beginning, it's necessary to go through the team training to get your team members and partners familiar with the concept of offering advisory services to your client and a far broader range of activities than what many of you would have been delivering to your traditional clients. This process continues when you think about getting started in delivering these services because we think it's necessary for you to have an understanding of your client that is one inch wide but a mile deep and clearly outlines an understanding of the weak points, the strong points, from a preservation of assets point of view, from an internal control point of view, an understanding of how the purchasing system focuses in this organisation. The client might be sourcing raw materials from an overseas site What's the process? What would happen if the delivery of those products from that overseas source were interrupted? And unfortunately, we have real evidence of that at present, haven't we, through the war in Israel and the, and the, uh, the Russian-inspired war in Ukraine. What else could affect the delivery of products? And what else needs to be jotted down in the system. That might only take one or two hours to determine that policy and others it might take a bit longer. So you have a clear understanding. It means that your key support staff, I think, should have visited the client's premises if possible, unless the client's premises are thousands of kilometres away. So that you have a closer feel because the whole concept is you were going to be offering a virtual CFO service. And if you were the CFO, you would have visited the plant and equipment, premises, offices that the client has, wouldn't you? It's the same setup here. And in the material, there's proposals and quotation forms for you to set out your vision of what the service is you're going to supply to your client. And then we move into the business systems. Our whole emphasis on the 52-week business enhancement system. I think this is very important. This is the missing link for a lot of SMEs in Australia. They appoint an accountant and uh, they basically receive an annual set of accounts and income tax return. That does not help them run their businesses. It does not help them make decisions that something went wrong yesterday or last week or last month because there's no accountability built into their systems. If they were a bit larger, they might have a full-time accountant or chief financial officer, but they're smaller, or they want to rely on your professional advice at this stage. So it's important that we as a profession are able to deliver that advice to them. So the second thing is the bookkeeping system needs to be reviewed. 
the internal control systems. If you're the CFO, you're very concerned about internal control, far more than probably what you were for the tax return function. And I think it all starts with the daily business report. All big businesses receive these. Every small business should also receive them. Now, there mightn't be much role for you to play in this other than to set it up, document it, and have an understanding that that works and make sure it happens. So you should be one of the recipients of the daily business report. And it could be as simple as number of customers, total sales, up or down from the same day last week or yesterday, whichever way your client would like to express it, what was the average sale, what was the gross profit percentage if the systems are so set up, computerized, that it's readily available, and whatever other information that the client may seek. It might be a yield if they've got a boning room type capacity that they're operating. And then we turn to the weekly performance report and key performance indicators and the other key words in their profitability report. I think this is a very important document. And unfortunately, not many SMEs receive them. Big business prepares this for a lot of their operations. I was the CFO of a listed public company and we had about 400 operations around Australia. Every one of them had a weekly performance and profitability report prepared. And that was always available in the local areas by Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning. And by Wednesday, all of that information had been transferred to head office where we summarized it and I met with the CEO around lunchtime and on Wednesday. So that meant two and a half days after the end of the month, the CEO was able to go through and look at the actual performance. Now, what he was looking for was variations. We had budgets in place. And if the weekly performance report was showing that uh, budget was achieved, I don't think he spent too much time on it. But what he was very interested in was where the gross profit percentage was less than what we had calculated. So in our retail butcher shops, if there was an expectation of a GP percentage of 32%, and he could see that some of our shops had only achieved 26%, he would be marking that with his red pen and wanting to get information back from the area manager that we had in various situations around the eastern states. This meant that real-time questions were being asked about performance for the previous week, no later than halfway through the next week. So that meant that if there'd been a problem in pricing, there'd been a problem in the products that had been purchased, and there'd been higher amounts paid for those products than what had been built into the selling price to be utilised. Whatever it was, there could be a post-mortem and action taken to fix it. I think it's a great system. And I've learned in later life that Woolworths and Coles and IGA have all got similar systems. And I know the whole of the meat industry operated along those type of systems. Why can't we introduce it for our SME clients, the ones that are far more vulnerable the ones that should be having their postmortems at least every week to see how they're going, to make sure that if the productivity of an individual team member uh, was budgeted at 80%, but for some reason only come in at 65% this week, is that a, an ongoing problem or was there some peculiarity that happened last week? And if it's going to be an ongoing problem, perhaps the charge-out rate needs to be changed because it's been based on an 80% productivity. A correction can be made straight away. Do you think those sort of issues get picked up when a clients are basically only receiving an annual set of accounts and they're having no input from you as their key financial advisor? 
that's a control and safeguard. That's making sure that there's insurance policies in place, um, that um, there's ongoing control, cash control. That's the monitoring the cash flow position of the business. Who's keeping an eye on it? And what's happening with things like debtor's days outstanding, creditor's days outstanding, all which comes back to affect cash and administration. The system then continues that we've had daily, weekly, and now we go to monthly. Monthly, I think every business activity that your client's got should have a profit and loss account prepared. It's then able to be compared to the, to the budget estimates. And key performance indicators and business metrics are then prepared for that activity compared to the previous month, compared to the budget. And balance sheet analysis is also able to be undertaken each month. And this might relate to things like debtors' days outstanding, which is very important, and creditors' days outstanding. And also the key creditors' analysis. Now, this is important. If your client is receiving uh, key products, raw material, key products, from a particular supplier and the suppliers indicated they wish to be paid every 30 days on the dot. I think it's important that you monitor that. And if you find that the clients let it slip out to 40 days, that, that a warning is put through to say, well, we agreed to pay these people in 30 days and they are a crucial supplier to the business. If we don't pay them, they may discontinue supply. And where will we, in a rush, get an alternative supplier? These things need to be discussed with the managers, the leadership team members. Work in progress analysis. A lot of your clients will have work in progress. Indeed, you have it in your own office. And we all know that some strange things can happen in work in progress. It needs to be monitored each month to make sure that there's a continual churning out of invoices, that work in progress is being cleared out, that it's not been left in there, in that work in progress account, because the person in charge of it knows that there's a big problem, there's a loss being incurred on a project, and knows that by finalising it, it will rear its ugly head. I think the quicker that management overall faces up to those sort of problems, the better. Because maybe some adjustments can be made somewhere else because the business knows that we've got a job over here that we're going to lose thirty or $40,000 from. Is there any way it can be picked up somewhere else? Or does there need to be changes in the system? How did this happen? How is this worse than the budgeted position of thirty to forty thousand dollars achieved? If you don't do these things religiously on a month by month basis, they get forgotten and they get lost in the system. And at the end of the year, when the accountant goes through and finalizes the annual accounts and tax returns. There's a comment to the owner, well, you didn't perform as good as what your budget said you would perform. There's not much chance of anyone identifying where the problem areas were. And obviously, then we've got the cash flow position. What is it compared to budget? And you should be able to compare back and find out what's the problem. Maybe the debtor's day is outstanding. It was budgeted at 45 days and it's blown out to 60 days. That will affect your cash flow very quickly. What, how's it blown out? Why is it blown out? Who's not doing their job? Have the debtor statements been sent out promptly within 24 hours at the end of a month? Has there been follow up? Has the, the date for payment been shown on the invoice that's gone to the client? All these things can then be looked at. Why is the cash flow not what we thought it was going to be? And that leads into the working capital analysis. Debtors, inventory, work in progress, bank account, creditors. How are they in that overall mix? 
for the working capital analysis. I think that should be done each month and reported back to the leadership team and to the board of directors. Preparation of rolling forecasts. We're going to talk about the predictive accounting process in a moment. We just separated it for these slides. But it's important that there's continual updates. And the rolling forecast is a great concept. And we'll be giving you notes as to how you do that. And preparing a monthly financial report for submission to your client. Now, your client hopefully will have a board of directors which meets to consider the performance or a board of advice. The partner in charge of this assignment may well be a member of that board of advice, but it's very important that a report's prepared. This is how the business performed for this month. These are the key points. These are the variations from budget because then there can be action because someone has seen what the results were. We're just now going to go through the packages that are exclusive for advanced and financial forecasting subscribers. So anything that's included in the advanced package rolls through into the financial forecasting subscribers. Business planning. The advanced package is our complete business planning section within ESS BizTools. So one of the first jobs that should be done after your client accepts your appointment in this new role is to prepare in conjunction with the leadership team, the business plan for the business. And we then flow through to predictive accounting reports. These are very important. Now the predictive accounting reports, what we're producing in the advanced package are notes on the various components, which we're gonna go through in a moment. You do not have access as part of your subscription to ESS BizTools advanced package for a software package. We will give you notes if you want to utilize those on a Excel spreadsheet approach, you can do so. Or you could subscribe to Plan Guru. We have a, an arrangement with Plan Guru that a subscriber in the advanced category and uh, the starter package and the advisory intro packages can subscribe to Plain Guru's software for the budgets and cash flow forecasts, if you wish. Obviously, in the financial forecasting package, Plain Guru software is included. So you might want to think about that if you wish. What predictive accounting um, and reports you should have is budgets for all business operations, not all consolidated into one PL, but separately, because that way you can zone in on what caused the problem. Why had the gross profit percentage dropped? Why had average sales uh, decreased? Because you're just looking at that one activity. When you put it all together, you're consolidating, you lose track of it. Big businesses do it all individually and then consolidate at the end of the year. Key drivers and important sub-accounts. Now, we're supplying you system notes for this so that you can utilise uh, our concepts by using um, other packages if you, if you wish. But the key drivers are the, the nerve centre, I think, of the budget process because you're going to look at your debtors. And one of the key things there is deciding on the debtor's days outstanding. If the debtor's days outstanding in the last financial balance sheet was, uh, say, 63 days, I find it very unbelievable that the budget for this year would say debtor's days outstanding is going to be 30 days. Yet I've seen instances of that in various reports that I've been able, that I've been asked to review for people. So the key drivers also look at inventory. So we can look at what the inventory levels are. If you ignore key drivers and just throw all these expenditure and income items into a budget and cash flow forecast, you miss the opportunity to pinpoint potential problems within the business. And that's what your role is, as I see, in offering these enhanced services. This is where you will bring real value to your clients.
cash flow forecasts. Again, you've got the system notes. The sources of cash flow are going to come from the operating budget for each entity, the income and the payments, the wages, etc. And uh, also, though, from the key drivers, the debtors' payments, the outlays for purchasing of stock, and so on. And some of the items might be driven from the projected balance sheet because there's loan accounts there and they're getting paid off. And the projected balance sheets is the culmination of this whole journey of preparing predictive accounts. It's giving to your client a summary, a picture of what the business is going to look like in one, two, three, five, ten years' time if you're doing your projections for that long. It allows you to be the storyteller, to sit down and then ind indicate to your client that as long as these budget parameters are adhered to, that debtors' days outstanding is 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 remains at uh, 35 days year in, year out. Creditors days outstanding or remains at whatever uh, you select, say 30 days. Capital expenditure is this amount and so on. This is what this business's financial position will look like in three years' time. Now, for the Business operator who's there in the day-to-day -day hassle of running a business with all sorts of things happening, all sorts of decisions being made. This is a great message that you can give him. This is your storyteller role. You've achieved all that, and this is what the net worth of this business is going to be in three years' time. Might help you not having to wake up so much at 3 a.m. Also included this cash flow forecast material, we've got the Chief Financial Officer Services. That's a full summary of forms and documents which will help you to offer that service. And then we get into capital raising because capital raising is now, as far as I'm concerned, an integral component of offering advisory services to your clients. Your clients can utilise early stage innovation company if they're a young company, primarily under three years of age, but some can go to six years of age. Low um, expenditure under $1 million in the previous 12 months and low income under $200,000 in the previous 12 months. And has been involved in some innovative activities, primarily research and development may have been admitted to the Accelerating Commercialization Program. They're on the innovation journey, and they can raise capital a bit easier than a lot, a lot of other companies, small companies can, because the government introduced a carrot into the legislation, two carrots, actually. One, they re, the investor receives 20% of their investment up to a limit of $10,000 for a retail investor, and $200,000 for a sophisticated investor paid by the Australian Taxation Office off their tax bill. And if they hold those shares that they received as part of this accreditation process as an early stage innovation company, they avoid paying capital gains tax if they hold those shares for more than 12 months and less than 10 years. And what happens in 10 years' time? Well, the company can get revalued then, and they then got a new cost price. It's a great system. And unfortunately, not enough accountants know about it. So you can offer a great service to your client. Crowdsource funding equity raising. Do you know your client can raise $5 million from the public as a crowdsource funding equity raising company? If your turnover is under $25 million, Gross value of assets is under $25 million. There's a process, and we've got all the process summarised within the advanced package so that you can guide your client on this process. And just think about it. They're going to need business plans, predictive accounting reports, a business valuation, 
a vision for where they're going. They need an understanding of how any of these capital raising processes work. You've got the material, you can deliver it to them. This is exciting stuff. I think it's an exciting time to be an accountant or bookkeeper offering services to SMEs. I wish a lot of this had been there in this sort of format when I was a senior partner of an accounting firm. We did a lot of work in this SME space, but we didn't have access to the capital raising opportunities that are now there. And I think more and more of our SME clients are going to realise that you don't have to own 100% of a business to be successful. Having some other people in the business as investors can be very beneficial, not just from the cash flow point of view either. It might be from ideas. You can invite some of those investors to be on your board of directors or your board of advice. The next item we've got is the personal property securities uh, register, due diligence system. Um, it's important. I didn't like the legislation when it was first brought in, and I've still got uh, reservations about it, but we have gone ahead uh, right from day one and written systems to help you guide your clients. Strategic business mentoring. Where's the client wanting to go? We've got some documentation there you can work through. And research and development. Well, this is one of the big ones because research and development is a huge activity for a lot of businesses with turnovers under $20 million. Now, they're all going to be companies and there's a lot of money getting spent. And I think they need a lot of advice and help from you because otherwise they get referred on to big four firms who really are not interested in them. They've got no empathy for what's happening in their businesses, because they don't understand smaller businesses. I think this should be a home goal for um, all small and medium-sized accounting firms offering advice. You need to control research and development activities, to be aware of what clients are potentially getting into innovative areas, making sure they understand how it works. You've got all the material within the advanced package. You can give advice from the original concept idea. I had an idea through to the lodgement of the annual return with Oz Industry, which incidentally is due on the 30th of April. It's always due 10 months after the end of the financial year. Now, also within this package, you receive anything that's in the starter package or the uh, advisory intro package because we're going up in steps. You get the tradee and the manufacturer charge out rate calculator and the budget. I've talked about tradee charge out rates a little bit earlier. This is very important information. Some of our subscribers have got a lot of trading clients. One's got 120. He's charging $8,000 each, uh, more than what they were paying for the annual tax return and annual accounts. So they're still paying that. And another $8,000, 120 of them. Because he processes their annual charge out rate calculator, then they receive monthly financial accounts and they compare things primarily to make sure that the calculations have stood up to the test of time. Are the productivity percentages been achieved? Is the markup on external purchases that's been put into the budget being achieved? And so on. We also have the retailers wholesale pricing calculator. Have you ever sat down with a retailer and tried to understand how they run their business? They've got all this stock, some of it stars, high volume, high markups. But unfortunately, not many people can run a business only with the stars. Then they've got cash cows, which is high volume, but low markup. And normally they need that. That's why it's high volume. If they don't have it in their shop, they mightn't get people coming in that might buy the stars. Now, if you had the two of them, you've probably got a good mixture. But invariably, there are then the problem lines. 
last year's fashions. I always pick on ladies' fashions. Last year, everyone was wearing yellow. And this year, it's going to be green or blue or something else. Very hard for a retailer to dispose of that stock that they've still got out the back all coloured yellow. So they're the problem lines. They were high markups. They were probably bordering on being stars before, but they're now a problem line. The quicker they get rid of it, that stock, the better, I think. And then you've got the disasters. No one owns up to why we bought them. You've got to be careful of computer automatic reordering systems, I've found, where a client struggles to get rid of um, the 50 products that were bought. Someone thought it was a great deal and it took four and a half years to get rid of. But suddenly another 50 of them don't turn up. I was in one of my uh, client's offices one day. They were a very big jewellery business. And I heard this uh, <laughs> yelling and screaming going outside and I recognised the voice. It was one of my, one of my old flatmates, to be honest. And um, I said, what's wrong with you, Jim? And he said, it took me, and I won't say the words he used, took him years to clear out of the shop some big vases that had been bought that he had to sell at seven or eight hundred dollars each. He said no one wanted them. We knew he gave them away. And they finally went. And he said, and actually, we had a quiet drink in the shop when we finally got rid of them. And you know what happened last week? Another 50 turned up again because an automatic reorder had placed the order again. Be careful. And this is what you will learn by getting involved with your clients. You probably never come across that sort of story if you're only doing the tax return back in the office. This is out with the clients and their premises. And professional services charge out rates are very similar to the tradies, except normally there's not the markup on external purchases. Business health checks, we've got them currently in five business groups, but we're adding to that. This is the key performance indicators, the business metrics, having a worksheet that you can just put the numbers in and the system does the rest. The debtors management system, very important. Debtors are the nightmare of business. A few years ago, Australia won a very dubious war, award. We had the longest debtors days outstanding in the world. Nothing to be proud about. It wasn't like winning a gold medal at the Olympics or trying to win the World Cup in soccer. The most dubious record. Debtors were out of control. Out of all the countries, we had the longest. So I think a debtors management system review is very important. We've written all that. It's in the system. You can sit down and go through your clients. And we've got we've put it into a manual so that you, you can edit it if you like to put in some of the terminology your client might use. Now, they might have a red book or a green book or a blue book, and I've struck a few of them over the years instead of cash receipts book and and the invoice summary book, they seem to colour things or make sure that you, you would then go through and edit it to put those sort of terminologies in there to help the poor person, normally a lady, that's been thrown into the job of being in charge of debtors because debtors' days outstanding are too high. And also we've got buying a business, succession planning, business valuation. We've got a product we call Survival in Difficult Times. I originally wrote that about 10, 12 years ago when in Western Australia they had had a cyclone and there were a lot of problems with businesses. But over the years, of course, I realised that there's survival problems in businesses all around Australia caused by natural disasters and big company close downs every year. So it's a product that I think you can visit at least every year and select some clients and just talk about it and say, now, who's in trouble? Who can we really go and talk to and work this out? Selling a business. So that's the overview of what's in the advanced package. I hope that you're interested. I hope that we can enter into a relationship whereby we can supply these services to you and we will continue to write new material, updated material, run monthly training sessions or 10, uh, 10 training sessions in your package each year. 
and keep you informed with members of it and just the monthly business plus newsletter that you can send to your clients that's run for start training within your own firm so you can access the advanced package for an upfront payment of five thousand four hundred dollars plus gst so five nine four oh dollars and you'll get everything that we've discussed or you could pay us in 12 monthly payments, including GST, of $594 to get started, to be offering the sort of services that your clients are looking for. And if you're fair income about offering services beyond taxation, advisory services to your clients, you will achieve a very nice return on investment, on the investment of $5,400 because you will be earning real income from these services. There's also group training. We've mentioned that uh, 10 times per annum for each of the products. We'll be producing our program for that in, next week and publishing that on our website. And um, if you're a subscriber in any of the, any package, you can go to any of the training sessions. And if you wish to, we do direct deliver training to the firm. So uh, we will do that. You tell us what you want, we will, and it will cost you $300 plus GST per hour. And we will give you an estimate of what that is going to entail. So if you're interested in subscribing to this package, Please go to www.essbiztools.com.au, click on Packages and Pricing, and then click on the product package that you wish to subscribe for. In this case, of course, today, the advanced package. And we will welcome you as a subscriber. If you need any more information, please contact us. You can send me an email, peter at essbiztools.com.au. Or telephone 0747-24118. Thank you very much for being with us today. I hope that uh, I will hear from you and I'll look forward to welcoming you and your colleagues to ESS Biz Tools as member subscribers. Stay safe. Have a great day. Goodbye.